Hello, guys. Hi, Hi. Hey, Piero, Giacomo, how are you? Fine, fine, you? Pretty good, pretty good. I was freelance. I was a freelance uh, motion designer just when when the pandemic started, and I was working for for events company, so company that were only specialized in live events, mm -hmm. okay. and th that all went to the trash, you know. Yeah, <laughs> almost like uh, bankrupt oh, wow. the company that I was working with, and it's a big big company with with a cool portfolio, good clients, huge projects for top artists. Yeah. And and they had to close for a couple of months. And and yeah, that was my main client. Uh the other clients were all figuring out everything. So it was like a like a big five months chunk of nothing. Okay. No people all the studios were closing. All the studios were holding their breath to, to you know, waiting for this to pass. Mm -hmm. and, and it was very stressful. If it wasn't for sports or for the weather that is here, that is mm -hmm. really good, uh, it, mm -hmm. it would be super hard, you know. <laughs> but and and there's where I decided to start uh, knocking the doors. Of companies that were looking for full-time jobs, you yeah. know, like a, yeah, like employee, yeah. um, which is okay to me. I like both, both, both worlds. You know, freelancing yeah. has some cool stuff, and 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 steady jobs has is is good stuff too. So it's a good balance. I'm very lucky to to be in the position that I am. I know uh, not everyone has this. Uh, opportunity you know to mm -hmm. to jump from freelance to full-time job in, in a during a pandemic yeah. and I, I totally relate to to that people to those people that are struggling right now especially young generations that are just starting their career and and suddenly we feel that everything is difficult but I can tell you that this is opening doors that we couldn't imagine before and thanks to the pandemic it's opening the work from home yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a reality for now on and and it's gonna be a good one especially for our field that we can work from home which is which has to be smart on how to charge and how to think on business mm -hmm. uh we have to forget a little bit that we are artists we are service providers <laughs> slash artists yeah. uh, but first <laughs> service providers if if uh, that's what that's one thing that i learned that if you don't think that way you always be frustrated because you are not an artist at least not me not mm -hmm. now also uh, I don't, I don't work for myself every time. I don't do paintings or 3D paintings or VR experience for my own, only enjoyment. Mm -hmm. I do it for a client. And, and that's my, that's, that's my bread and butter, uh, as, as the American said, you know, that's my money. Yeah. 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 That's where the money is, you know. And as soon as I started to think that way, um, my view of the business went better and i felt more confident about how to charge how to present a bid to a client present a, a budget uh and even maintaining a company for a couple of years oh. uh, and i grew up in venezuela venezuela is not a it's not an easy country and when i graduated Venezuela was better um, uh, industry-wise. Mm -hmm. there, there were a lot of big uh, broadcasting companies that were working there still, like Sony, HBO, yeah. uh, AXN, big ones. You know, yeah. they were in charge of all Latin America, and I had the I had the the luck to I was lucky to work with them for a couple of years. Um, 
through you know through context to through my perseverance through my work through through being constant there and and collaborative and humble and and, and try to try to escalate to, to build my career from scratch mm-hmm. it's not an easy task but if you are willing to do it you you, you just have to wait and and work and and be be serious of your work it's not, I, I I couldn't say that it's an easy job, and and I couldn't imagine also being a being an accountant and say, oh, this is an easy job because yeah. I won't imagine being an accountant. I, I couldn't do it. That that for me is one of the heaviest jobs, you know, or lawyer or something, you know. But yeah, it's a it's an interesting <clears throat> moment right now. Working from home is opening big doors. Yeah. Technology is in a is in a moment that is uh, very easy to do working from home right now, especially uh, hopefully if you have a good internet access. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. That's main main key. But um, apart from that, um, I think studios are going to be uh, digital from now on, more and more. Yep. They will. They will have a, just a small core of producers, maybe the, the, the VP and CEOs and whatever to, you know, go and receive clients and talk with clients and, and, and stuff like that, but can be anywhere, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a huge plus for us. Yes. Yeah. We can. Companies are more prepared to work with people from all around the world. So uh, if, if you're in Australia, you can work with people from America without not much trouble anymore. And yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully, we are going to to establish uh, a rate that it, that that is good for everyone. You yeah. Know, because uh, I think that's something we should. Uh, have in the in the university you know and the college uh the training to how how the business works Mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah practical um hands-on jobs while while you're at school still you know uh or a good program of uh this is how budgets are this is how the real life it's going to be for you, you know, because no, no one teaches you that. No. Yeah, that's true. Also, most of the time you are just undervaluing your job because you don't want to ask that much. And so companies are just, okay, I'm going to pay you a little bit less, even if you don't know which is the real value of your, of your work. And this is bringing in a serious trouble. Yeah. Uh, the taboo, the, the, the taboo about money is one of the most damaging things for us as an artist slash uh, service providers. Yeah. Because you're an, not an artist and you are an, a service provider. And, and if you go, if you take your car to the mechanic, yeah. Uh, yeah. the mechanic is going to charge you by hour and by, by, um, you know, how, how many people work in your car? How yeah. is the technology that is implied? What are the, the, the pieces that is changing? That's a service also. It's not as simple to compare it to the comp- between one and the other, but it's, it's basically like that, you know? Oh, yes. Uh, well, did you start as an employee or as a freelancer? I started painting houses. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I started painting houses <laughs> to pay my, to pay my last two years of my career, which were not um, cheap on my country. Uh, I started, you know, trying to relieve a little of the charge of paying that to my parents, mm-hmm. and I did that for a couple of months, and then I started like doing freelance or commissions for for design clients. Mm-hmm. Like small things, you know, like your uncle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much as you can, and, you try. And and he's supporting you a little bit, but you are supporting him a little bit, so you you start warming up there. 
then then little gigs here and there with with companies and and when i i graduated i started i started with a started with a startup okay. i i was a, a graphic designer in a startup they they last like six months or something like that or i left at six months um then i started in a, in a post production company in venezuela called totuma at that moment it was a pretty big company big name um it was because of contacts because i was i was in the same school as them so they were you know they 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 went to the presentation of all the thesis and they saw our thesis and they they liked our work and all that you know it's basically yeah. like like going and presenting your portfolio to some client. So they call me and I started working for them for two years. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was 2005. Then in 2006, almost seven, I started a company with two freelancers that I met on that company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your own company. So that, that is your own company, this one. I, I was in, in this first company called Totuma. Uh, working as a motion graphic designer yeah. as a junior, and then then I started senior, and there I I met these two other artists that were um, uh, freelancers, yeah. and we decided to open uh, a new company. Mm. Okay, okay. So we were four directors uh, slash owners, and we we managed to do um, you know all the nitty-gritty job of uh open the excel sheets yeah. and <laughs> start throwing numbers and and calculating costs and all that that again you never never learned that in the school yeah which is a huge part for our our career because eventually we want to yeah. be the owners or some <clears throat> of some studio right we managed to do cool stuff for for Sony, for AXN, oh, for okay. all the clients. Then Venezuela was really difficult, political issues in Venezuela. Uh, I think we all know that. <laughs> uh, so the, the the market was really really shrinking there. Yeah, sure. Uh, we decided to split. We decided to dissolve the company. Mm -hmm. Uh, every every owner, every um, director went freelance again. I was I started freelancing with my wife. Uh, she is also a motion graphic designer from oh, the same. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really. <laughs> and we did a lot of projection mapping. We started, you know, in in a different field that was projection mapping. Projection mapping was starting in Venezuela at that time. I think Europe had like like five or seven years behind us. Like they were already doing projection mapping for a long time. Okay. But in Venezuela, it was pretty new, and 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 I started with this client. The reason I'm saying this is that I know that it's uh, scary to jump to a different type or a different field within the field. It's not a crime to jump within your field, you know. I'm not a producer, but I have produced a lot because I have to, you know, because I needed to when I have when I had my company yeah. or when I have a, a huge client yeah. that I cannot embrace by myself. I cannot uh, do the whole job by myself. So I, I am a little of a producer too, or an art director too. Uh, that's not a crime. That is that's very um, useful for you for your career. And and you have to to take the chance to do it because if not, that big client is not gonna call you, basically. Yeah. Nothing or it's gonna can. it's gonna go to a guy that is uh, faster than you that that says, yeah, I can do it. Then I will figure it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't have the 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 infrastructure or the talents, but I will start calling people. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until you can find people that that can do it. I mean, you can take the work and then, as you said, figure it out later. 
few, later, not too much later, because you have to do the job obviously for the for the client. But uh, th that is something that I, uh, as Italian, are really good at doing. Like you know, we can do a bit of everything. We can we can try to find a way. <laughs> you take it, and then that's all right. I can do it, and then you find out how to do it. But in this way, you you took the the job, and eventually, for example, that is something that I suggest a lot to to juniors who find, for example, a job, uh, a client for as a freelancer, even if you don't know how to do it, go and do it. Then you learn how to do it. So you have two reasons to do it. You learn, you have, you earn money, and at the same time, you build a portfolio of clients eventually. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to, to give them insurance. You, get it, you, you need to give them assurance yeah. that you are to deliver, you know? And, and that's part of the... Uh, bless you. That's part of the struggle, you know. That's which is very um, constructive. At the end, you will learn how to be your own boss and how to yeah. be the boss of other people, and how how to be a good boss is a great um, thing to learn, you know. Because we all know that boss is a tricky position. Yeah, a tricky position. <laughs> And a good boss could make the work really fun and profitable, and and even though it's it's a crazy time and it's crunch time, and you wanna you wanna sleep because you're tired. With a good with a good boss, you can you can keep going, you know, you can keep pushing, and you will be happy. On, although you yeah. are super tired at the end. Yeah, good good bosses. It's necessary to make a, a great company. Otherwise, you know, people don't want to work. People just go back home earlier, or they just try to skip the the work that they have to do. Uh, yeah. So uh, much better to be a because also yeah, talking with other aunties, they told us how important it is to be when when working in a team to have good people, people that can relate to other in a in a good way. Because if you find someone that is reluctant, if it, that is not really no, happy to be there. Uh, it then diffuses it to other people. It passes to other people, and and the uh, and the, the morale goes down. And people don't want to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worse results, yeah. and uh, and you go on with that. I think one one huge uh, learning for me for for me t through my career is. How to be humble and collaborative, and 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 being able to 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 change your view, uh, not in not in in the way that you have to change your view every time someone tells you other type of idea. Is the is the ability to to mold the way you do things to the company you are working with oh, yeah. because some companies has their own way and and you don't have to stick with yours only because you are not going to learn that way either way if you are not flexible enough yeah or they are gonna say like this guy doesn't learn you know <laughs> this guy <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, un doesn't, learn. doesn't understand our way of doing things and and that's huge for some artists. They they just can't. They 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 need to do things as they know how to do it. And and that's limiting, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. What? Um, I was curious about how did you get into your last job? So you say that you switch between uh, being a freelancer, so no one. Literally, no one has to pay you into a full-time job during the pandemic. It's quite huge as an accomplishment. And what did you found to be more uh, uh, more useful to just jump around and get a job in the pandemic? What was the question again? The, the last question? Use more useful no, what to... Is, uh, what is the stuff that is more useful to find a job right now during the pandemic? Well for the for the situation the specific situation is to be um it's basically to be calm and to have 
the insurance to have something constant, some money constantly coming, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, uh, big companies uh, with full-time jobs, they offer you um, health insurance and 401k, which is like a saving account. Mm-hmm. And that's huge. That's uh, that's a big relief off your shoulders when you are freelancing because it's pretty expensive, the the health insurance here. Yeah. And American. and and yeah, and employers employers always offer that to as a as a way to grab you, you know, to to have you because mm-hmm. they know they they are lifting a, a huge. Uh, weight of your cho- of your shoulders. Uh, that was one of the one of the consideration. The other consideration is that it was a, a huge company. It's Activision, so it's a it's a huge name to have in in your in your CV. You know. Yeah. Um, I've I've learned a lot on 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 the process of I don't know eight months that I'm be, I have been working with them. Uh, because it's a huge company, you have to learn how they work, you know, how they, how they manage their talent, how they, they manage their time. And, and that's also super helpful and, and, and valuable, you know, mm-hmm. uh, how they organize all the parts until the point that that little part goes to you. So you are, uh, you are the specialist to do this little yeah. this part, you know, and, and to understand that there is a brain, uh, or several brains, uh, trying to converge all these ideas into one mm-hmm. is my, it's really mind blowing. Yeah. I, this is the first time I work with a huge, huge company that I had to say that too, because probably some artists are already accustomed to do that. You know, they, they know how sure, the sure, way, sure, sure. So, you know. mm. but I, I tend to work with small companies almost since I started studying uh, graphic mm-hmm. design. My school was like 200 people tops okay. all, all my school, you know, Cam- oh, wow. Cam- okay. I, I thought about the classroom. No, no, no. All my school okay. all the yeah. and all, okay. uh, all the teachers even. <laughs> it was a okay. super tiny school from there, the first companies were also like 20 people tops or, you know, 15 or 10 or even three. And, 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 you know, learning, um, to your question, Giacomo, um, learning how to apply to a good, to a big company is also a technique or, or it's also more like, um, you have to be confident of the, of the service that you provide. Yeah. I provide good motion graphics, for example, mm-hmm. and that's where I am going to apply. I'm not going to apply for a rhino artist or a, yeah. or a illustrator. I'm I'm going to apply for motion graphic design, and and yeah, the process was was super long. It was three months of process to hire me. Wow, uh, three interviews, uh, nothing scary, huh? Just it's just a different way. Yeah. Uh, maybe in a small company you have to condense that three months into three days. Yeah. But because this is a huge company, they have to do the balance check in many rings of the process, you know. Um, but that was also stressful for me. Like, oh, this is a huge company. I don't know how I'm doing. I, I. You know, the imposter syndrome yeah. start, start kicking you. And, and that's something new generation have to be aware of. It's, it's the imposter syndrome is forever. As long as you are humble, uh, and you know what, what you're doing is, is okay. But if you're faking all the time, the, the skills that you have, probably this, the, the, the imposter syndrome is going to be heavier, you know? Yeah. It's gonna be your best uh, friend probably doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. The imposter syndrome works for some things. I I feel because it makes you balance your expectation and it makes you 
push a little harder, you know, yeah. because you're feeling that you are not, you know, feeling the, 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 the position that you are in. And, and that's a good thing to have. But controlled. Yeah, <laughs> understood. Thing. Yes, understood. Thing. Um, so, sorry. What what steps did you do uh, from like the day you said, "All right, I, now I want to look for uh, a job where I am employed instead of being a freelance." What did what steps did you do to get where you are now? Apart from the interview themselves, what what did you do exactly? Well, first first of all, I started with my demo reel. I start publishing my demo reel, my, my website. Uh, one, one huge learning throughout my career is that you don't need a three minute demo reel. You need a, a 30 second demo reel that shows the best. Mm -hmm. Even if it's three things, but it has to be the, that three things. Yeah. Uh, no one watch, uh, uh, uh two minutes reel in my industry, especially not in LA. Uh, they don't care about the music, so don't stress about the music. Mm -hmm. If you are starting a demo reel, don't stress about the music. You can put a classical track on top of whatever you have. Uh, people is going to mute that. That's a reality. Uh, I started from there. I started publishing my, my demo reel and my, my, uh, my about, my curriculum. Okay. Uh, trying to be the, the most uh, accurate to what I did. And also some selling lines, like, uh, you know, being cool. Uh, the, this project was really cool because we learned this and that, and we, we won an award for that three years later, just small little capsules of great flavors here and there are pretty important you know you don't have to write a uh, three uh, pages uh, curriculum you don't need that either it's it's the same proportion as the demo reel they don't want to read what all that you have done they they just want to read the things that are important for your career and the things that are valuable for what you are as an artist okay um all those logos for uh, aunts and cousins and, and, and friends, they don't need to know that. Okay. So, <laughs> That's important. So, yeah. <laughs> so I started, yeah, I started publishing my, um, my image for okay. putting it in a way. Um, I started to learn through internet, through, uh, sites like yours, uh, how people approach big companies, how people write curriculums, how people, um, tend to receive this type of things mm -hmm. in big companies. So, so I kind of tune the language of all that has, uh, something on my demo reel on my, on my website, mm -hmm. all the language that I was working, that I was using on my, on my website. I have to tune it a little bit, especially to be more precise, you know, and then I started hunting on, on LinkedIn, you know, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, Google maps. I started opening Google maps, uh, production companies, uh, advertisement companies, yeah. uh, where they are, they are near, they are big. How, what is the, the, how is, how good is the portfolio? This, these guys do this, these guys have, you know, I'm interested in doing that, or I'm interested in doing that other thing. Mm -hmm. or or what, you know, start tuning things. Um, and then I started to knock in doors, you know, all like that, meaning? all those doors. You went there and said, Not I mean. Really. <laughs> uh, 2.0 on the doors, you know, yeah. just, <laughs> all right. <laughs> just email them. And, and one thing that, that I learned here in, in, especially in LA is that being too serious and too, um, uh, square on the language you use uh it's not always the, the good the best approach mm -hmm. not not that you have to go and, and be on super on formal you know okay you have to have some formalities but you can be yourself basically not okay. swear 
don't don't use bad words and use a yeah. lot of yeah. stuff. But you can do you can be very humble, you know. Uh, this is what I'm doing. I want to work with you because I I found your website amazing and and it will be so cool if we can collaborate together or even work together uh, mm -hmm. in some you know it's just that you don't have to sell all that you are they are going to go to your website that's your tool to sell oh you have a you have your own website that you give as not that I show you but like your big portfolio yeah well i have i have the my website that is my portfolio and then i have like a like my my extensive portfolio in Behance, mm -hmm. which I have, I have almost everything that I'm done that I that I liked, you know. Okay. My website is more like condensed peel of flavor. Okay. Um, if people is interested from my website, they can go to all the social medias and start digging and start watching whatever. Uh, but yeah, that was that that was my main goal when I when I decided, okay, this pandemic is going to go for a while. Uh, I'm not sure if the sorry if the live live events are going to continue for so long. So yeah. I, I will start looking in another okay. in another direction for yeah. a little. Bit. Yeah, and from the first day I started knocking doors. It probably passed like three months for some for some clients to write back, you know. Okay, that's quite huge. That's huge. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's not a. It's you have to shoot in in a long distance, you know. Well, you have to think for what was gonna happen. Yeah, I, hopefully you have a contention plan. But if you don't have as many of us, we didn't have a contention plan in the pandemic. But you have to be patient. That's the only way. <laughs> if you have a portfolio, you have to polish that portfolio. Uh, one thing, one one advice that I, I will probably give to to new generation is, yeah. is don't don't try to imitate other people's work. Don't try to do all the tutorials that are over over there in the in YouTube of how to make a cool dynamic bouncing c for the good looking ball yeah. mm -hmm. because there is millions of that oh, yeah. everyone everyone has that you know and and i know it's it's not an easy thing to do because it looks cool uh i want to do it i want to learn how to do that how to do it but if you do it don't put that straight to your portfolio because it's gonna taste the same as everyone is doing, you know, it's going to look as you are ripping off someone else's reel, you know, try to do your stuff, try to create your view, even though it's dark, even though if it's super experimental and, 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 and none of your family members understand that you have to do it. You have to do something different, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I know this experiment. experiment yeah. Something different can sound very challenging for new generations, for for new artists, mm -hmm. because we because we tend to put the bar super high. Like I have to be di different, I have to be unique, and I have to be the unicorn that everyone yeah. is is looking for. That's BS, you know. That's not real. Uh, <laughs> there is no unicorns. Unicorns doesn't exist. And if you if you are approached from a company that wants a unicorn, be careful because they probably want to pay you uh, less than that one you that what you uh, yeah, really are worth, you know, because they want to pay a, a four position person into one into position. One, yes, person. yes, and that's tricky. Sounds very. <laughs> Sounds very off, uh, awesome that they they think that you are a unicorn, but in the reality, you will have to charge them as as a four person company. Yeah, yeah. that that is one of the things we will talk with with another another artist and uh, told us that 
there, there are a lot of juniors in big companies, for example. Uh, but uh, the good thing for companies is that they want to learn and they want to get experience. So they try to do as much as possible to learn. And sometimes they go even over the time that they should be there working. So, and that's, you know, they obviously they, they're they not doing it because they have to, but because they want to. So it's not so heavy for them. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky yeah. field, this one, right? <laughs> you're not an artist, you're a service provider. You don't, you don't leave your car in the, in the mechanic for more days that they want it. Yeah. They will start charging you, you know? Indeed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, because we are so, um, passionate about our work. and uh, we want to make a cool stuff. Yeah. We want to, we want the project to, to end winning something, you know, uh, recognizing the recognition from somewhere, you know, uh, and you give more than what they are paying sometimes. And yeah, but I think. In my experience, that's something uh, experience and time will give you, you know? Yeah. It's like, um, I'm sorry, I love this project, but I have to live, you know? I have I have a wife, I have a kid, yeah. or I have, I have a dog that I have to be with me, you know? I have my mom, you know? I, I, I need to go to the mountain, I need to go to the beach, and I have to have a life, basically. Indeed. And, and And, yeah you start balancing that while you get older, for sure. Yeah, experience and, you know, you get more wise with time and you start to understand what is important for you. It that I mean, if you are really studying and you're really young, you probably want to put all the energy you have into it because it's like, oh my God, this is going to be my career. This is going to be my life, my future. I want to do it. I want to work there. I want to work at that company and I will do whatever it needs to be done to, to go there. And in time, you start to understand there are also other things that you like, and then you know everything balances. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to, obviously. But yeah, yeah. yeah don't get me wrong. Uh, sacrifice is necessary for sure. You have to spend time learning new tools. You have to you have to not be afraid of failing because you you will have to get up again and and, and start doing it again. Mm -hmm. And for that, you have to practice and for. To practice all the time, you have to sacrifice some time or some friends, you know, or something, you know, uh, that's, that's one part of the, of this field that is, uh, interesting is that I'm a self taught. I, I learn 3D by myself. Um, I have a, a small, like starting, uh, with a friend that taught me how to uh, model and how to animate in Maya mm -hmm. long ago in 2005. Uh, and from there, I started picking up and, and learn uh, C4D. I, I started with Maya, but I, uh, then I, I started learn, learning C4D. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the tutorials that are, right, that are out there are pretty useful. Now it's Redshift. Now it's, the, you know, all the tools that that are like combining into C4D are amazing. Uh, X particles or all this is, is awesome. But if you don't have a project or if you don't have a view, it will, it will end tasting like all the tutorials that are out there, you know? And that's, that's a sacrifice. You have to learn the tutorial and then you have to do something unique. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking that probably uh, stuff that you said about the uh, the tutorial is quite uh, important because uh, uh, during the call we had before uh, we had the opportunity to speak with the people who decided to uh, place in the in the real stuff that we have done during the master, and so uh, they know where did you study started because of your reel and this is going to just cut your legs before even starting on creating your career and we should also focus as you said on yeah sacrificing something something that could be important something like uh, friends family not our life but 
something like that in the end uh, to this is friend they won't they won't go anywhere but you know some people wants you to party all the time and and, and you are in that in, in an age you that you yes yeah i mean uh for new generations the taboo about money is is a key to me uh because you want to earn money at the end and you want this to be your your career and you want this to be this is gonna be your work your job and and that's the way you make money <laughs> it's as simple as that and and we our society especially our, our latin latino society is built in a way that you don't talk about money mm, yeah because you don't know who is going to offend who is going to be offended by you yeah. and that's stupid that's really stupid because when you realize you're under underselling yourself a lot probably uh especially in a market like the us you know you have to know the rates if you don't know the rates you can damage the market by sell by by underselling your services you know if you're cheap people probably get in contact to you but you are damaging the the the, the market because the way in the moment that you want to step up and and start earning a little more it's going to be difficult for you because you put the bar super low yeah. and you have to know the market you have to know what is the rate of the markets that you're working with uh and for that you just have to ask you know yeah. ask your friends ask ask the, the companies ask internet uh don't be afraid of that the money is not a taboo taboo is is from the taboo is from the guys that don't want to pay you the the the, the money that you deserve you yeah. know yeah uh, or or a bad society way of, of talking about money you know that's something schools should should teach to me because they they supposed to they supposed to they are supposed to uh, guide you through the market you are about to embrace you know they should and they, yeah they should yeah. exactly uh so having said that don't be afraid of fail because failing is learning yeah. and and you have to be humble with that uh collaborate collaboration is, is a key is a huge part i remember my first gig in a in a in this company in venezuela oh tell us about uh i was like what 25 24 it was 2005 uh combustion was one of these software that were like super hot at that moment <laughs> combustion hot but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <why? laughs> it was like a, it was like a like a pro after effects you know okay 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 for compositing and i i didn't know that software i i was not aware of even the name of that software mm -hmm. And this company hired me to do motion graphic with combustion. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> and I had this, uh, this coworker that, that was a senior. I was just a junior 1.0, you know? Yeah. Uh, and this guy was just right by me. He was the, the lead of the, of the project and he, he knew combustion. Mm -hmm. I have to ask that guy like 400 times a day for three months. He kind of, kind of hated me for a while <laughs> because I was annoying. I, I had to be annoying. I had to be humble and say, I don't know this. I, I, I know the concepts of, you know, compositing in After Effects, but I have never used combustion before. So he, he taught me everything. He was my teacher for, for three months. And he hated me for two months. And then after the second month, when I, when I started to, to learn and, and to apply the learning and everything, I started to teach him some tricks that I learned. <laughs> and we, we became good friends, you know, because he was humble enough to recognize my value as a, as a new learner. And I was humble enough to, to give back, you know. And to, and to ask how, how, as many times as I needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 
some artists are afraid of that. If if you're afraid of, of asking, you're done, you know. Absolutely. There is no school for uh, new technologies. There, there is no school for uh, VR, the latest VR headsets and uh, possibilities that they have, mm -hmm. that, that has. There is a, a couple of tutorials there, but you have to ask, you know, yeah. or, or fail or, or try and fail, try and error all the time. So I remember that situation when I was starting. I remember that a lot because that taught me to to be humble with new artists, uh, teach them as much as you can, because you don't you never know when that um, knowledge is going to give back to you. Mm -hmm. That was pretty useful for me. Right. Okay. It seems that it's recursive to, uh, as a feedback from seniors, to just um, make junior ask for help. Yeah. Most junior are just okay. I don't know something, but I'm too shy, too worried about asking. That probably I'm not doing this, or I'm failing at this, and then I'm showing that I failed, uh, as it is, and. Uh, Right now, with the pandemic, we have a lot of um, different uh, uh, way to ask for help, and it will be uh, uh, really a help to the juniors if uh, we can just <laughs> teach them to ask because it's sometimes it's so hard to make them ask for help. And but it's funny because, uh, as you said, you you sound a little bit probably uh, a little bit. Uh, overwhelming with your senior but in the end you were the one uh, teaching him uh, stuff so you, yeah. you you don't know when as you said stuff is coming back yeah. and how it's coming back exactly uh and it, and it was little things but it, it gives you happiness to give back you know yeah. uh, just a little how oh, i learned how to do this alpha channel this way and 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 he was like I didn't even realize that that little click was there, you know, and it makes the life super easier after that, or, or, you know, it's just giving back. I remember also on this last company before the pandemic, we were working for almost a year into, um, in a, in a project for, uh, for a live event, a huge live event, 45 minutes content. Uh, projection mapping into a huge city. It was insane. We were like, we were seven artists, seven CG artists mm -hmm. at one point, uh, Houdini artists involved, um, all the technicians for the projections that are a different world, notch and touch designer and, and, you know, lighting and yeah. mm -hmm. it was a huge, huge project. All freelancers all with different backgrounds and different uh, levels of, of expertise. Yeah. Some huge, huge artists that, that, you know, I learned a lot on that project, like, like a five year condensed in, in just one year, uh, Fantastic. very tiring, very tiring project, long hours, you know, I, I can say that 10 hours a day was the minimum wow. on that for, for a year. A lot. For a year. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and we were all so humble, man. Everyone in that team was able to, was willing to give back and, and, and give you a different view of how to solve some specific thing because all, one, there were the, the ego was really mild. Mm -hmm. I can say like there were no ego, but we have a little ego, you know. Yeah, everyone. Uh, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we all had. Uh, but that was a key, uh, a huge part. We were willing to help the other. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing, what we were dealing with, because it was new. No one was doing that. We were pioneering on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and and everyone was from a different background you know one was super um specialist in in houdini and the other one was specialist in in you know in espresso in c4d which is a different word to me it's, it's like chinese i don't know that language okay. uh and the other and so on you know and we were all like like a network of um mixing knowledge trying to figure it out every day yeah. the next step and we all learn a lot i can say that and 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 that was a huge uh, learning especially knowing that we were that most of the people were super talented and willing to give back you know willing to give some knowledge to to the next one and to the other artists and and that is and you know and and learn yeah, yeah they were they were able to learn they were willing to learn and yeah that's huge I don't know if we can ask about what, what was the project about. Like, it seems to be huge. Like, yeah, the project was um, in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, Saudi Arabia is opening to tourism right now. Okay. And so they were promoting a nation city, which is called Adria. Okay. Adria. It's, it's a difficult name to. Yeah, Adria. To... Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is like, a, I, if I if I am correct, it was like a two mile okay. front of the city that we were working with. So wow. the that was our canvas, a two mile city. Okay. Divided in seven zones, and each zone was a different uh, approach. It was huge, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, all the technology that was involved on that was huge. Um, apart from the projection mapping, we created a, a Falcon, a, a physical Falcon, yeah, like a, of... like a 20 meter Falcon. Okay. With articulations, like a puppet, uh, moved by, by a crowd of people, by a crew of people moving with, with poles. Okay. You Man, I can sh I can share you the link to that. Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're watching a bit of, of the website, but all, all we see, I think, is recorded with a camera. It's not made. In, in, yeah. This, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's always it's getting harder and harder harder to understand if it's real <laughs> or if it's if it's not. But, <laughs> so it's worth asking the question. <laughs> okay yeah so yeah for for that project uh i oh, did like okay now we saw that we saw the the, the big falcon. the big falcon yeah there it goes. okay and you were saying about this yeah i did like three like like four scenes on this uh project uh like i created all the scenes um four or 15 or something like that um and i i uh, i worked on the falcon too of the or of i work on the design of the falcon of the yeah. 3d design. there was a different artist uh on charge of building the 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 rhino with the right measurements and the right amount of pieces to for this falcon to be built yeah. in the field. and that was a different uh, artist with a different skill set uh we had to communicate a lot with that artist uh to make the the, the right model for that um and, and it was challenging man it was really really challenging yeah <laughs> it must have been no i absolutely wish to know how many projectors were in there because it's huge. And you uh, you, ask me, you ask me about that? Yeah, you know it. Like how many projectors were there? I don't I don't remember, but I think they broke uh they broke um um what do you call a record, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, because okay. it's super huge. All 
saying. I think there is that that info is somewhere on the description of the of the project. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, we will check it later yeah. and uh, write a little bit down because <laughs> I'm curious about that. There you go. Deliver via 200 plus projectors. The amount of pixels is. I, I find hard times using my own projector to project into yeah. the world. Uh, think about 200 yeah. all together. <laughs> like, yeah. 225 million pixels wide. I don't have. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that that was a, a really a really interesting and um, an important project for me uh, from last from last year from 2019 2020 is, yeah, is, is, yeah. is a <laughs> uh, so yeah I learned a lot I met great great artists uh, I can say that the artists that were not able to to be flexible on that project they they went out super fast like mm -hmm. one week two week turnaround I mean, no. because it was not an easy job it was you you will have to experiment yeah. on the go yeah really humble it must be really humble to do that yeah yeah uh, amazing dude um i'm, I'm curious now what are the your projects for the future let's say what are you aiming to now um i will i will be patient with the pandemic mm -hmm. that's my plan uh i will try to to not uh feel the eager to to change that fast because mm -hmm. i like to be freelance but i i also like to be full time mm -hmm. um, both things has both good and bad. Yeah. Um, I'm learning different stuff right now. I'm learning VR and AR, and no. and I want to and I want to go deeper into that. Miguel, it was a pleasure to have you here. You just gave us a lot of tips and tricks for all the juniors that are following us, and we will be more than happy to have you again. Thank Likewise, uh, thanks, thanks to you to to do this for uh, for the community. I'm very, I'm, I'm very honored to to be a part of. I wish we can talk about more things in the future for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, okay, Miguel. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.